a lot of other heroes got buffs. Yeah. And he... Ben just come back onto the scene with a vengeance. Ah. Oh, whoa, oh. watch out. The yokes. And he got a decent nerf, too. This tail that Havos has going on here, the sweep of Forsaken Beauty. Look at this, Merlini. What a, what a beaut. Snake Lady. Twin Serpent Bow, rocking those mythicals. All right, game number two here, folks. Empire up 1-0 in this best of three series. This is the upper bracket. The semifinals winner here. We're moving on to the finals of the upper bracket, one series away from the grand finals itself. Radiant side will have Na'Vi. Van Score will take the Vengeful Spirit. Dendi takes the Brewmaster probably to the mid lane. Pavost, he's in love and he's got the Dusa. He'll be farming away as the one. Go Black, he's on the Ogre Magi, and that leaves Funnet for the off lane Fairy Dragon Puck. Dire. Oh, they smoke. Oh, there it is. So Na'Vi going for the invade. Who can they find here? That's aggressive. Oh, Always want to fly cow. perhaps. They want to catch Empire off guard. They have a server ward over here though. They're gonna pop it. Uh oh, they see it. Are they gonna find Aloha dead? Magic Missile to start it off. Easy first blood for Navi. The crowd erupting as Go Black secures the first blood yet again. That's risky. Uh, or, sorry, that's a that's not that high a probability play for Navi. Obviously, it paid off there, but generally, this I, I think the supports will either stand over here or over here a little bit before. And they were so close to popping the smoke and then being able to retreat out. Um, but yeah, that's pretty nice for Navi, I must say. First blood to Ogre gets boots out of the gate. It's big blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> big blue. So dire side, we've got Yoki on the Tide Hunter. He'll be headed to the off lane. In the mid, that gives us resolution on Beastmaster. It'll be a safe lane try for Empire. Always wanna fly, takes the ancient apparition. Aloha dance on the Raptor. And that leaves us with Silent. Position one juggernaut. Dendi and resolution duking it out in the mid lane. Both heroes getting Pretty darn low and not not close to bottle really on the Beastmaster. Yeah, Dendi getting there, still has a couple of full tangles. We'll actually buy a healing salve before the bottle and runs it uh, thinking about running out on the courier here. Rotation probably always wanna fly already, maybe looking for a courier snipe if he can find it. Holds the high ground outside the ancients, but Funnix scouts it out. Jaunts to the orb, sees always wanna fly and will push him back to make sure that courier mid stays safe. Classic funic play with the Quelling Blade. So, ward situation coming down. Looks like Go Black will find a victory here. Opens up this camp for himself. Dyer have an observer in this little area, the entryway into the Radiant Jungle. Oh, oh, up top, always want to fly. Funic, they're going to bump into each other. Always want to fly with those big frosty fingers. The Chilling Touch doing a lot of damage to Funic. Won't find a kill, but does harass him back, something fierce. Funic now out of regeneration. Very nice awareness from Always Wanna Fly. I mean, I guess he doesn't see a fuck. He's like, well, where else could he possibly be? And Funic is one of the most notorious players for doing this uh, reign. Oh, Yoki trying to contest the rune. A bottom gets stunned up. And this could be another kill, potentially. The Tide rather tanky, already level two. He will have an anchor smash up in a second, but Go Black ready to chase him down. One more fire blast on the way. Hits him with the anchor smash. It's gonna be a battle of the big boys. Yoki stunned up. He's still alive. The ogre just can't get the damage in that he needs. 48 HP and Yoki will live. Magic stick saving lives. So how's this mid lane going? It's a pretty even slugfest. 14 CS up on Resolution and 11 on Dendi. These two melee heroes farming fairly evenly. The safe lane farmers looking even as well. The boast as well as silent within one or two CS of each other. So uh, the, the play from Empire is how do they want to tackle the Dusa? Do they want quick struggling right now? By the way, oh, oh sounds like funny. Nice and creative play. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's okay. Better than sitting up in that top lane where he was getting absolutely nothing. Yeah, and constantly dying to disruptor would not be good for him. So it, yeah, Empire has two main ways to deal with the Dusa. Win before she gets big, or trade farm with her and deal with her later with lots of mana burn or by limiting everyone else's farm, uh, or by just kiting her a lot. Like even something like Cold Feet with the little Beastmaster summons, uh, Anchor Smash, like these things are great for just limiting her output and damage. And, I think they have, they they can't really end the game 
early versus the Brew versus the Puck. These heroes are great at defending and holding towers, and I definitely think they have a late game to take in, especially when the Beastmaster gets uh, an early Necro 3. I think he will. I can't imagine Resolution delaying the Necro too much. Maybe for a Blink Dagger first, if that's really where he wants to go. But I'd expect that Necro 3 at a pretty reasonable time. Yogi, yeah, he's level 3, speak of the devil, walks into Big Blue, who grabs the invisibility rune that spawns at the 4 minute mark. Go Black just stalking him down. Tide stacking up the Ancients, looks like he's got a double stack already. Saving that for later, for a little pick-me-up. Tide's doing okay, he's level 3, has a couple of CS to his name, hasn't died yet. All things considered, doing rather well. Phonic, how's his jungling experience going? Using that Quelling Blade, now to Cliff Jungle once more. Almost level three, and at least finding some CS now. Very smart. Huh? Making that Quelling Blade worth it. Not something you see too often, the Cliff Jungling Puck, but it's really working out well here. There's just no way Phonic can have a, a do anything in this lane. Disruptor so damn good. But oh, no. Resolution initiated on. There's the Bruce split from Dendi. Go Black helping him out. It's going to be a surround and Beastmaster falls. The first split from Dendi. Yield to kill. That's huge for him. And he also got level 6 before the Beastmaster. Yep, just barely. Beastmaster got 100 XP short. So, 2 to nil. Na'Vi coming back with a vengeance here as they strike first. Glancing at the graphs. Not a huge lead, but a lead nonetheless. Juggernaut getting absolute free farm though, and actually pulling head ahead of Havos by just a little bit, 39 to 34. Goes for the fast phase boots, and we'll see what build Silent moves into, if it is going to be that mana burn, Manta style that you were talking about, or if it's uh, just going to be that more classic carry jug with massive madness. He will go for the Aquila now, after his phase boots. In the mid lane, Dendi gets his bottle refilled by Goblack, I believe. Very nice for him. And we'll be getting on his Blink Dagger fairly soon. And I, I mean, at that point, it's it's going to be on Empire to kind of deal with them, either through the use of awesome Static Storms and Beastmaster Kinks. And I, I still don't anticipate them putting any pressure on me so, until later on into the game. Like, what can a Tidehunter really do uh, versus her? Can't really walk up. You're gonna take a lot of right clicks, especially with her having phase. You're gonna lose a lot of mana from Mystic Snake, and there's just not a way to win the lane versus the Medusa at this point. Yeah, Yoki's at least found level four. He's gotten that baseline. Don't forget he has Ancients to retreat to. Just a double stack for now, but it is there. Now in the top lane, Empire pressing this tier one tower quite hard. Punish will rotate out of the jungle to try and leave some experience. Silence finds him. And he's got an army slack available. Puck, a rock here to use it on. There's the glimpse back after the orb. Punic in more than a little bit of trouble. They won't even need the Omni slack to find the kill. Disruptor makes it happen. Empire get on the score. I mean, this is the thing about Puck. It, it's just, if he has the right spells to deal with them, he's just not that big of an issue. The glimpse is just one of the best. At least until he gets yields, which is 25 minutes into the game. Yeah, that, that's a little ways off. To say. Resolution, he'll just go straight macro up here. Staff and Wizardry grab off the Brown Boots bottle. Tide able to get his Arcanes also. Though so all of a sudden, things looking a little bit better for Empire. Jug not only farming well, but now securing that kill. Getting a little bit bigger, a little bit badder. Now has the Morbid Mask. It will be the Mask of Madness open. It's good for securing Roach. They have the Beastmaster board, which will certainly help. I think they can duel with very easily, considering Ducks can solo it with just a Mask of, uh, mask of Madness. Or they can just do it as a team. They have the Inner Beast, or they will have it fairly soon. So Beastmaster goes for the 2 4 0 build. Very nice to have those beefy summons, the nice range. Uh, the, the, hawk, hawk. the Hawk gives a lot of vision. He's got two Hawks out right now, but... Yeah. Definitely gives a lot of intel. Radiant and Observer Ward down. Some vision of that bottom rune. And we got a Lane Ward here in the mid to try and help out Dendi. Still a very even farm pass in here. Both heroes within two last hits of each other. Dendi closing on the blink like you were mentioning. About 1,800 up. And just a little ways to go. Funnick, look at this cheeky little guy here. Still putting that coin blade to good use. And... Slowly but surely starting to tick down these ancients. It's gonna take a while. 
It's going to take a while, but I mean, it's still something. I mean, what's the Tide doing right now? He's now farming the safe lanes. They will rotate. Give Yoki a little bit of farm priority as now the Jug can just move into the jungle. That's one of the great things about this Master Madness build on Jug is it opens up so much space for your supports to take over that safe lane um, or your other cores if they fall short in their lane. Yeah, most certainly. And their support still working on level 6. Actually, Disruptor just hit level 6. Ancient Apparition still one full level away. And looks like they're going to smoke off the back of the Zadik Storm pickup. Yeah, smoke rotation towards the mid lane. They'll go ahead and preemptively chilling touch it. And it seems mid is where they want to set their sights. Navi being very patient here. They will stay behind the tower for now. Dendi does have a primal split available. May not be the easiest. Gank attempt, but down bottom is going to be Yogi that gets initiated on. TP's coming through. Tidal survive, and that TP will be enough to repel the fire. Now the Grunt's back on the low. Static Storm Kinetic Field right into an Omni Tide. Now he's out of health. Yogi comes in to get the last hit. Secures his level 6. And gets it halfway to that point yet. Aloha Dance. Once again on that Disruptor. Mm -hmm. This hero. Wow. Well done. Smoke. Not what they had in mind. I think they wanted to hit, but it worked out quite well. It does create some more space for Dendi, though, who has enough gold for the Blink Dagger. But Empire cutting the lane will start doing some serious damage to this Tier 1 tower. They're getting this control early on once more. It's starting to have some eerie similarities to that game one where Empire getting that map control early on and lots of momentum going their way. Check the graphs and it's already 1,500 gold lead for the Dire. Navi have a Dusa working for them though and Dusa looks like she's going to go for a more tanky build with the ultimate orb first. No fast Yasha. I guess Grips will be blocked by pretty darn support. Well, they deny the bottom tier one tower. Silent gets stunned. Mystic Snake now to swap back. Does not have an ultimate. Force to Blade Fury to try and survive. This will be a close one. He's on the run. May still live. Always want to fly. He's trying to slow down. Havo. Silent gets off the healing ward and will just barely live. Meanwhile, the mid lane, a fight's breaking out. It'll already be a one for one. Beastmaster for Ogre Magi is then. He goes back into group form. Blinks down the low ground, but glimpses back up. Yoki, he's got a Ravage. Do you burn it for death? Yes, you do. If he's trying to TP out, Thunder Strike to take him down. And this Brewmaster is going to be hard pressed to survive. The next field pops out. And Dendi will get punished. One for two as Empire find the better of him. Glimpse has just been destroying them. Yeah. It really has. So Punk finally making some recovery. Level eight. With only one death. Not so bad for the Puck. Mm -hmm. And another stack of the Ancients. The Black Drake's now spawning for him. So he's done a lot of uh, cheeky stuff with this Quelling Blade. All things considered, it has definitely paid off. A, a worthy investment. But stunned by the Centaur, sets up for resolution. Funnick will be able to phase and jaunt to the orb, but oof. A little bit of a close call there. Resolution actually didn't have his Primal War, so that was up. A little bit of kill thanks to that Centaur. Yeah. So a bet. Mm, let's see. Brewmaster. Brewmaster. It, it's not worth it. I, I think generally it's worth it to get a solo kill, but since he has to run the risk of just dying to a disruptor all the time, it might not be worth it for him to make try to make plays on his own this early into the game. Hmm. Okay. Well, don't do Aloha Dance. <clears throat> Pardon me. Thunderstrike comes out. Only level one. Still does a fair bit of damage with just that first value point. Disruptor already making steps towards the Agnum Scepter. Point booster at the 12 minutes. Pretty good start for him after level 8 as Yoki moves into that double stack in the Ancients that will secure a Blade Dagger for the water. Mm -hmm. And closing in on the Necro Book, Beastmaster with the two core pieces. A all going out on top. Fun yeah. it. Yeah. There's the roar. A connect. Is this going to be a shatter though? I think they need more damage than that. Not going to be a kill. Yeah, they need a little bit more. I'm not sure if they thought there'd be a rotation and he didn't want to commit. I'm just surprised he didn't. Or did he just not do the math and thought that was definitely going to be a kill? It's a little, it's a little odd. Maybe it was just because Navi had a lot missing, was afraid to overcommit if they were on their way in. Well, they had a reserve reward, so they could have... Uh, they would have spotted out any TPs coming in. I just think that they thought it was enough damage. And if not, he just orbs phase. 
Uh, or phase and just away. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go to mid. Let's go to the mid. Let's go to the Pavos doing so much damage with the Stone Gaze, locking him down, and they'll get the kill on Ogre Magi. Now the tornado from Dendi Split locks Yogi in place, but it comes in with a waning rip, Dream Coil to secure the kill. It's a one for two. They have to trade their Ogre, but they get a couple on Empire to make it work. Great swap by Vance Court. He swapped him outside of the Static Storm to, so that he was able to pull off his ultimate and save them from near certain death. Uh, Ogre died solo to the jug. I didn't see Ogre in that battle yet. That was that solo army slash to him off in the top lane. So it's a two for nil here in this mid exchange, but a one for two across the top. Now they get a couple of licks in on this tier one tower mid, but Empire will not let it go down without a fight. Nice flash. Come on in, Vance Lord gets glitched back right into a roar, and again, Empire showing us what this disruptor is made of, setting up kill after kill, and keeping Empire alive. And if it's not daytime, they have an observer war plot down to gain vision for the limbs. They on top of that, they also have the hawk. And it's just so important to have the uh, have the extra vision to go for those glimpses. Sometimes you'll see Zeus ult too. There you go. Let's take a look at Radiant Vision. They do have a ward down right here. They'll go ahead and drop a sentry to take out this observer. An empire move right into the roach pit. You saw the rotation. Right. Not to go into the sentry. Without brutal. Yeah. They've got a stone gate as well. Yeah, they need this one. But this will be an easy road for Empire. Will go down uncontested. Cyber will probably be the one to go. That's a TP scroll there. Now Empire ready to fight. Ravage down for another 40, but with a fresh, fresh Aegis. Hungry for blood. And this is about the time where Empire started looking to widen the gap a lot. They have a few thousand gold lead right now, but definitely looking to pressure towers, take more objectives, and limit Deuce's farm. And it looks like they've already limited Deuce's farm by forcing her to TP to the mid lane. Looks like they are not privy to it, however. These cooldowns from Empire right around the corner. Yogi with a Ravage in about 10 as they head up top. For the 16 minute rune, Navi nearby, ready to contest. Funnick gets bloodlust, and he goes in on the resolution. Dream Coil used. There will be a four of a cross. They get to kill the Beastmaster. A Primal Smith's been used as well. Navi, one more. Disruptor, isolated by the tornado, and Navi will converge on the Raptor. From Yoki, connect on most of Navi. Aloha Dan still alive. They get the kill on top of the one for one now. With Aloha Dan just hiding Navi. A quick back on Dendi. Yoki moving into the tree line. Omni Slash doing a lot of work. A low on mana, low on HP. He falls. It's Empire to level it out. Two for two. Go black left behind. Gets off a multicast with the bloodlust. But the body block. It's a fatty on fatty here, Merlini. And soon to be a two for three. It's a blast. Barely clips the ogre and forces the shack. Great play by Disruptor. He dropped the static storm right after he got cycled. And that completely changed the fight. Set up a huge ravage for a tie hunter and a little hard dance. Oh, oh, he dies. No split. He goes too far forward. Now Van score caught by the primal roar. It's gonna be Empire coming out on top again. A double for the side as they secure this tier one mix. Yikes. Oh boy, Empire busting her wide open as they take the biggest lead we've seen so far this match. They're so good at capitalizing when Broodmaster split us down. Yeah. The first is Roshan, now it's this like huge... Just in general, I mean every time we've yeah. seen Empire this tournament, they're so good at playing around enemy. Look at this big stack, Silent. <laughs> I don't think you can take that, buddy. Silent rolling the dice! He's gonna be in some trouble. One more stray auto attack secures the kill. He's got the Aegis of the Immortal. Silent punished for that greedy maneuver there. Comes back to life. Funic will just orb defensively. That's such a large stack. How are you gonna take like <laughs> two gold? Ones? But Empire, they know the juice is up there. They may try to contest this. There is a static storm. Uh, and will hit Havos. Here's an opportunity. Uh, but he's gonna clear out most of these ancients before they can do anything about it. There is now the Lincoln Spear on Havos, and Ancient Apparition finds himself back in the mic. The Lincoln Spear is important. Yeah. It or is. the glimpse, so he can actually split the 
Yeah. No real easy way for a disruptor to break the linkings in a lot of scenarios. Of course, you do have Thunder Strike. It's got decent range, but not nearly as much as that long range of links at 1800. You're hoping for those straight pick -offs. But in team fights, the link is almost going to be useless. Like yeah. Cold Feet will proc it. Beastmaster from Mana Burn. Not ideal to proc it, but still a way to proc it. Yep. Omni Slash. He's got the uh, level 2 Necronomicon now. We're going to have Necro 3. And making some pretty good progress here. Glancing at the graphs once more. Empire holding on to now 7,500 gold lead. And everything updates from those tower kills and that rope shot. Now Navi. Five in the mid, all grouped up. And again, sort of like last game, a little wary about farming solo. They want to try to make this army around Havos. He will go for a Yasha coming up next. Very close to finishing it up. Decent farm on the Dusa, tangling with the top, but still not at that huge critical mass yet. Tidehunter, look at his positioning. Smoked up in the back. Yep. And on the back side of the tower, Resolution always on a flyer there. Double damage up on the Beastmaster to defend this tower. Meanwhile, the top lane, Silent Split Pushing, forces in two TPs. Brewmaster, he gets flipped back after TPing into a status from Kinetic Field. And the Ravage, the Link on two minutes score now. Lockdown spun it. Joins the party. Huge damage on the Empire. Aloha Dance goes down first. Now Yoki taking a lot of damage. They'll lose their AA. It's three kills for Navi as they start to turn this around. Silent wants the most. Can he actually find it? Resolution bringing him low. He's out of mana. There is a Blade Fury, but no Omni Slash. It's already been used. He'll turn and just start poking at Go Black. Can't commit any deeper for it. And it will be a three for two with Navi finding the advantage in his team fight. Just slightly, though. Just slightly. Yep, two for three. And I'm just slightly, but whoa, look at that gold change. It's like a 1,400 net worth change for Navi. Juggernaut was not there early enough. Uh, into the fight, and actually they don't have enough sustained damage on the Medusa. She's getting to that point where they can throw a couple of ultimates at her and she still won't die. He's actually getting there a little quicker than I thought. We're 20 minutes in and you're right, they're having trouble bringing her down. Although to be fair, they did burn, well the Ravage hit a couple, but really uh, locked down on the Brute. Did Hippos get hit by that Ravage? Uh, I don't I think, think so. I don't think so. I don't think he did, but now Beastmaster has that level 3 Necronomicon. Another mana burn pool. The it's pool just coming tough. out in the field. Necro book versus uh, versus Deuce is always tough because they get stone gauge and she uh, can kill him very easily. Well, Silent does not go for a mana burn build this go around. He does get Sanjin Yasha and now the EKB will be coming out next. Can always split the SNY to get the Manta, but does not have any interest so far in prioritizing the Diffusal Blade. I think this might come back to bite him. Because he has he has S and Y, which is nice to chase, but they have blood on the other side. And we saw how easily the Medusa just kind of scooted away uh, from the Juggernaut. And yeah, this was a nice er, uh, early mid game, but Navi is fending them off enough to the point where I think Dusa is is going to be a problem. Yeah, I mean, Empire, they don't really have the greatest pushing lineup either. So even though they've done pretty well in these little skirmishes, they've only taken Tier 1 Tower. They have defended all of theirs. It is 3 nil in total tower count, but not able to do that, like, crippling damage as they did last time with the Troll. Around this time, they had all the Outer Towers down, and we're looking to knock on that front door of Navi's base. And on top of that, looks like Dusa is going for a Yasha... And an ultimate or could be a Manta. Manta very good versus Juggernaut, and I mean, he is going to have damage output issues. <coughs> Pardon me, Silent pressing forward, chilling touches on. He's got the mask and magic already. There we go. Havos don't get glitched back. Omni Slash taking a lot of bounces. Havos right into the center truck, and then he'll get brought down to Silent. It could be a one for one. Primal Roar Ravage keeps Silent alive. Now they get Go Black. Two kills for Empire right out of the gate. Van score left behind. Funnick deep into the tower, but needs to be careful. Jumps to the orb, and it will be three for nil. An Empire rolling over Navi here. What a smart play by Empire. They use the Omni Slash to break the link in, and then immediately put them back in. And on top of that, they have a Ice Blast. Trailing him as he was coming back in with the glimpse. A sounding play by Empire. So now Doki has the fourth staff, so more mobility shows if that link gets broken, he can still get in position to ravage. And another way to break the Lincolns. Yeah, very true. 
Beastmaster, he's got uh, 2200 gold on top of that level 3 Necronomicon. So if he wants a blink, progr uh, progression towards the Ags, he's getting close. Silent will pick up a BKB completed, still in the stash, but a tool to deal with in this next fight. Long range Ice Blast, tickling him in the well, but no shares. Yeah, and that's the blink on Beastmaster. So now even more initiation tools for that final war they can catch out at uh, that Dusa. Plus one for the Boots of Travel. Don't see that very often. Not at this stage. Blink BOTs. Um, kind of an odd item progression. Usually it'll be like Yules or Ags almost certainly coming out after the Blink. And it's nice to split push and to get kills with the uh, Brewmaster ulti. With Brewmaster ulti, you almost always have a way to uh, TP in a team fight. However, that counts on him getting his ulti. Yeah, that's true. Which is not easy for his Disruptor yeah. and Beastmaster. And the BOT's buffed somewhat recently, I think 6.82, so they have that shorter cooldown. So, hashtag efficiency coming out for Funnick. We'll see how it helps the bottom one. He's still rather under farm. Disruptor's actually not that far behind him. And that's uh, the difference of a core versus a support. So, just speaking to how little love the Puck's got in this game, the Raptor almost at that Agonim's humor, Lini. 500 gold off. The Vost will be able to grab his Mantis style, but. And big items on their support. Goes into the point booster and looks like he's got, nope, that's just a TP scroll. So still a ways before the AA Ags comes out, but he's making progress. 14 seconds left until Ravage. I doubt Navi think it's uh, not up at this point, or definitely don't want to take the risk. Off on the Juggernaut, Silent will just Blade Fury to try and make it away. Mask of Magic on, he's just too damn fast. They can't close the gap, even with the Bloodlust. Yoki on the high ground, will not need to Ravage quite yet. But Navi are all grouped up in their jungle. Roche is right around the corner, spawning in just about 10 seconds or so. Could become a focal point of this match. Beastmaster, no other arrows on him. Was checking to see if he had a Vlad so they can do Roche. But yeah, Juggernaut's still very strong at this point in the game. That's going to absorb most of the damage. Go Black will win. That's Blade Fury comes out. Ice Blast finds through. Flips Go Black and they will force out the Shatter. It looks like Big Tubby goes down. There's the ultimate from uh, the Raptor. He's going to get a big grab. Dandy getting low. He'll go down. They also lost the Vengeful Spirit. Havos uses the Stone Gaze trying to turn this around. A big coil for Funny Green. And then Havos versus four. Gets the kill on the tie, but now out of mana. Isolated and brought down. Triple kill for Silas. A one for four as Empire moved towards the high ground. It's looking ugly. They've been able to control Dendi so well in these team fights. Drop Static Storm, bring all his mana with the Necro Book. He pops Magic Stick, he gets swapped out, and he still dies. Empire's coordination is out of this world. Yeah, they are executing two of C here in Marini. They force the buyback from Medusa. A lot of damage on that tier three tower. They play this so smart, so controlled. They don't overcommit, and they make sure Havos does not get anything from that buyback other than an Ice Blast to the face. Roshan has respawned. Healing Ward has cooled down. Probably want to wait for their ultimates up because they don't want to fight when. They don't have their ultimates up, yet Na'Vi has theirs. But this could potentially be the perfect time for, for Na'Vi to go to the Roche Pit themselves. They are playing on the back foot and they really need more farm on Havos. And what better way to secure some farm? Mm -hmm. So no Ravage for 70 seconds. Uh, Stone Gaze coming up in about 10. The big one here is they've got the Bruce split. And that was what allowed Empire to have that uncontested Roche last go around. Empire are ready to Navi's movement here. Navi won't be able to kill Roche too quickly. I don't believe they had a medallion. Nope, indeed not. And Empire knows this will not be a fast Roche on. Collecting themselves. We'll take a look at the dire vision right now. And boy, do they have a lot of it. The board's down. The smoke's been revealed. Silent in the front lines of the BKB on. Has an Omni Slash trying to save from the Omni Slash. And it's for all heroes. Ice Black comes flying through. And the split from Jesse. Successful. Well, not dead. But it's starting to go down a one for one. Support for support. The boat will need the scope game. But now the Omni Slash flies out. Oh, that man's style. Proving effective here as the boat stays alive. But Silent isolating him on the backside of this fight. The tide about to go down on the other side. Now Silent in some trouble. It's a barrel of fire. Resolution reinitiating. Out comes the primal roar. On to Denny. He's out of mana. Now out of luck. 
Dendi goes down, Bunny coming all back in, breaks down the tide, but it won't be enough to save Havost. Navi on the ropes. It's gonna be another two for four exchange. Empire coming out ahead, and that means a second row secured for the duck. With these engages, he beats it, he's run it, and holds in on the best of spirit. This means that someone's gonna get locked down by the sad absorbed into kinetic field, and he saved his Omni Slash for Medusa. Medusa saved her Manta for an Omni Slash, but still, she ends up dying in the end, and Resolution being patient as always with his roars. That was also without a rap. Yeah, that that was I mean, their team fight is just incredible. Their, their level of coordination, and I can see why they win their game in 25, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Very, very impressive indeed. Every single one of these players executing to a T, and even Disruptor, he was the first one to die for Empire, but he still got the Static Storm down before he died, and really got most of his damage out. So even though you kill the Raptor, you're not stopping him from using those ultimates. Dendi's split certainly helped. We're at that stage of the game where the Bruce split, not nearly as scary as it once was at the 29 minute mark. He has level 14 with a blast, but no BKB on Dendi. His momentum has really slowed down. He's about on par with the support of Empire. Only 500 net worth ahead of the Ancient Apparition. He needs BKB. Yes, he does. He's making the progress towards it, but he's a really long ways away. BKB is imperative for him for multiple reasons. Firstly, so he doesn't get mana burned to death by Beastmaster, so he can get his ulti off or Ecstatic Storm and to block the Ravage. And he's just taken so many unfortunate spills in this uh, particular game. Empire very well versed in how to play against the Ventral Spirit. Mm -hmm. And also the Dusa. I mean, they've done such a good job isolating Havost, killing the supports that keep him alive, like you were mentioning, that Ventral Spirit. If you zone her out, force her to run for her life, can't swap yourself. One way to try and shut down Havost. Resolution comes in. Well, he's going to show that range That's a little unfortunate. But, ah, still zones him out. They get a tier 2 tower, so... There's that European smiley face. All right, Merlin, high ground assault. Here we go. Radiant with a glyph. Provost not here yet. He does have a TP. He will be able to come back and defend, but already his tier 3 tower down to about half health. Navi forced to glyph it. Empire doing the slow siege here. Being very cautious. Bonnick hops forward. Blink back, doesn't even use a spell. Tier 3 tower goes down, uncontested. Havos coming in, Lincoln's is broken. Stone Gaze still available. Dendi with a split. Empire happy just to get tier 3. Force Havos back, and now they will reset. Keep in mind the Aegis is not on silence. Even though he could drop the Vakila for it, they deem Resolution the better Aegis carrier. Yeah, he also has BOTs now to go with his Blink Dagger. And oh boy, Ancient Apparition gets the Aghanim Scepter. Not yet level 16, but he's knocking on the door. He's 15, and that Shadow Threshold makes going to both that much easier. Silent in the front lines again. Two minutes until the Aegis despawns. Yoki does have a Ravage, as well as a Yule Scepter. So kind of a stalemate here at the uh, top lane, as these exposed barracks with no Glyph. Empire can win a fight here. This could steal the deal. The boat does not have a buyback. Still on cooldown for another minute and 20. Empire want to seize the moment, knowing that Havos can't buy back and they don't have a glyph. And they have the Aegis. The stars are starting to align here. Though, respecting Navi and realizing they could get wiped if they get hyper aggressive. Silent, still going for the sure damage on the ranged barracks. The first to go down is a quick set of three kills. This for heads back, and it doesn't matter. Havos called it before the fight's even done. Empire 2 0 in Navi in the semifinals and knocking them down to the lower bracket. What a fantastic draft by them. It's just amazing team coordination. Look at these Stone Cold killers. Very small smiles. They knew what they were going to do that series. They had a plan, and they are hot. Wow. I am super impressed by their play. I count me in, count me in with that. Being able to drop a Brewmaster that many times is, is, is just incredible. And then he was one six and seven that game. One and six on the Brewmaster. And the the Beastmaster Hawk.